Hey everyone, and welcome back to Virtualization How To, and I'm Brandon Lee. Today we're diving into a backup solution that you may not have heard about, but that you absolutely should check out Akivo Backup and Replication. Now, this is a solution that I feel has been flying under the radar for quite some time. And whether you're running a home lab or managing a larger IT environment, the Kivo brings an impressive set of features that can help you to keep your data safe in times of disaster or data loss. Also, I've reached out to Nikivo for this video and they are going to provide license keys for 20 VMs for a giveaway of up to five users who comment on this video. So be sure to comment on the video. This is double what you can actually get for free if you sign up for free on the Nikivo website. So we've got a lot to cover. Let's dive in and get started. To start with, what is Nikivo Backup and Replication? Well, simply put, like other commercial solutions on the market, it's a comprehensive backup and recovery solution designed for modern workloads, whether those are virtualized, physical, cloud environments. It also supports most of the major platforms that you think of, like VMware, Hyper-V, KVM, Nutanix, and most recently, and excitingly, Proxmox. However, I think this is where the similarities stop. Nikivo provides a very streamlined, efficient, and secure data protection solution solution that I think quite possibly is the best backup solution that you've never heard of. One of the things I love about Nikivo that drew me into the solution when I first tried it out a few years back was just how easy it is to get started. Now you can deploy it a number of ways, but the easiest being a virtual appliance that you can simply spin up in your environment, get the virtual appliance running, and then literally within 10 minutes, you can be creating your first backup job. It's that easy. It's also compatible with NAS devices like Synology and other major brands on the market. This is actually how I'm running the solution is on my Synology NAS in my home lab. It makes it super efficient and easy to just have an autonomous backup solution, hardware that's outside of your production home lab environment or even your production environment at work. You can install Nikivo on a NAS device and it's a fully encompassed, isolated backup solution that you can start storing your production data and have that data separate from production and isolated. I love it. To me, that is one of the coolest things about Nikivo compared to other solutions that I see on the market today. Now let's talk about the backup capabilities. Nikivo provides agentless backups for VMware, Hyper-V, KVM, and their latest edition is Proxmox. Now I think agentless is definitely what you want in this space since lifecycle management of agents across any platform or solution is just a major headache. So being able to back up all of your different solutions without agents is a definite win. And it makes it super easy to work with multiple virtualization technologies. For instance, Proxmox is Proxmox backup server great at what it does? Yes, it's free, it's open source, it backs up Proxmox uh, very well. However, Proxmox backup server cannot back up VMware or KVM or Hyper-V. However, Nikivo, in a single pane of glass, a single solution, you can back up all of those different virtualized environments. Another really cool feature is the ransomware protection that you get built into Nikivo. It has immutable backups. What are immutable backups? Well, maybe you've heard of this term, but it essentially is a write once, read many model or worm model, if you've heard of it references that. Worm backups mean that once those backups are written, they are set to read only no matter what. And until that immutable bit expires, there is no changing that particular data. Now, the first thing that ransomware is going to do when it targets your environment is they're going to seek out your backup files so that there is absolutely no way that you can recover your data. Now, what does that mean? It means they're going to likely get a ransom payment. Immutable backups is the best protection against any of those types of attacks, including ransomware. They can try all day long to encrypt or change or delete your backups, 
and they're not going to be able to if those backups are immutable. And that is definitely a feature of Nikivo backup and replication. Now, another great feature of Nikivo is the way they use storage. It's very efficient. They have a model they call the forever incremental backup approach. It means after the first full backup, only the changes are saved. And that drastically reduces the amount of storage space that is needed. And it does its synthetic full backups as it goes along. So you're always in that state of efficient backup storage as well as the ability to restore fresh data as well as your recovery points. For those of you with Microsoft 365, Akivo also provides backup capabilities for your M365 data, including emails, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Teams data, ensuring that even if you are running those things in production, that data can be safe as well. And another really cool feature of Nikivo is it has built-in monitoring and reporting. And I'm not just talking about monitoring and reporting about your backups, which it certainly has that monitoring and reporting on your actual backup jobs, your backup data, your repositories, all of those components. But Nikivo actually has built-in monitoring of VMware vSphere. So all in one solution, not only to back up your environment, but you can also monitor on that environment. Lastly, let me mention a few other features that Nikivo offers. It offers instant VM recovery. You can spin up your entire virtual machine within minutes, direct backup to public cloud storage like AWS or Azure, and even global deduplication and compression, which also further optimizes that storage efficiency. Now, for those who need reliable and cost-effective disaster recovery solutions, these these features are really, really valuable. I can tell you, if you put Nikivo up against some of the other big players out there in the market, you're probably going to find that Nikivo toe-to-toe -to -toe is a much cheaper solution for essentially the same features. So I've given you an overview of many of those features. Let me dive into the console with you guys and walk you around Nikivo backup and replication running in my home lab environment. So I'm logged into my Synology NAS device. I'm opening the package center and I wanted to show you guys just how quick and easily you can find Nikivo backup replication. If you just type in and search for Nikivo, here you're gonna see that I have already got it installed, but otherwise it would have you guys install it. So you just install it and then you would be to the same point where you can just open the application. It's gonna open up, you'll get the uh, self-signed certificate error. And here I'm just logging into my Nikivo installation. And as you can see, I've got a lot of issues with the virtual machine backups just due to the volatility of my home lab environment due to hosts going up and down. I'm trying different things, virtual machines, what have you. So here you can see the SMTP settings. Now I'm going to my inventory configuration. Here I've got my home lab vCenter that's added to inventory, which is vcsa.cloud.local. Under settings, you click the plus sign under inventory. And here you're going to be able to choose between virtual, SaaS, file share, physical, application, cloud storage, and storage devices. Now, for most of you, you're probably going to be, first of all, at least interested in the virtual radio button. Now, as a note, I'm running prior to version 11. I've yet to update my Synology NAS to V11, so you don't see Proxmox, but it is there in version 11. So I'm just stepping you guys through here how to add an inventory item. And that's simple as that. Once you add the virtual environment to your inventory, then you can create jobs for that respective type of inventory item. So as you can see, the other jobs are grayed out, such as Nutanix, M365, Oracle, Amazon EC2. So until you add those things to your inventory, those will be grayed out. I'm just gonna step you guys through creating a new backup job in inventory items that I already have added to my inventory in the home lab. Here's a dev cluster that I've got with a single node cluster. I've got a powered off Ubuntu server. As you can see, you can put a check by that virtual machine or the entire cluster. Now, interestingly, once you do the entire cluster, Nikivo is smart enough to auto add any added virtual machines to that cluster. So if you add a new virtual machine, it's just gonna automatically pick that up in the next backup. Here we see the repository destination, and then also we've got the scheduling options. Here on schedule number one, you can name that schedule, set the type of schedule, how often that schedule repeats, 
And another thing I really like about Nikivo here, very granular in nature in that you can add schedules. You don't have to just depend on that one schedule. You can add another schedule that may be a completely different set of time variables that you need to configure. And I really like that. It also has this calendar view if you like to visualize and see things on a calendar. Uh, and that makes it much more easy for you to schedule those items. You can just click on a day, a time, an hour, and then it will pop up the menu where you can actually create the type of job that you want to create for that time slot. Now, moving along as we're looking at that schedule option, we can move along to that option screen. And on the option screen, we can name the backup job, give it a priority. We've got lots of options here. We can enable change tracking, which is on by default, app aware mode on by default. We can set pre and post actions, which those are important with Linux virtual machines, especially if you want to run a, a script before backing up, script after uh, to do some of that application aware. You can set job bandwidth rules if you want to configure a certain bandwidth limit for those backup jobs so that it's not saturating your network. Uh, that is configurable. You can always do that, either always active or always on a schedule. You can schedule those rules to come into play uh, as needed in your environment, depending on what your bandwidth needs are uh, for that in particular. So lots of options here on the Nakivo backup and replication job screen. Again, the pre and post job settings, we can send email reports to specific email addresses. We can use specific transporters. We can uh, do certain file indexing and other types of configuration. Now, when we select to run this job, you can either say run for all VMs or run for selected VMs. And once you click that, you can either place a checkbox by specific VMs if you want to just run for a subset of those or just simply for all VMs. So I'm going to just cancel out of this and showing you guys that job creation wizard. And that's it. Now we're going to recover a virtual machine. As you can see, we've got a lot of options for our VMware vSphere recovery, and it would be the same for any other virtualization solution individual files, applications, but we're gonna do the full VM recovery. Here it's going to have you select which VM or backup that you want to restore or recover in your environment. And I'm just gonna pick that Ubuntu server. Always use the latest recovery point. And then I'm gonna select the destination container. I'm going to select my cluster storage. I'm going to select the target network that we're going to bring the VM up on. I'm going to select the DPG servers and we're going to just take a peek at the advanced setup. Nothing much there we want to change. Here we name the recovery job and I like this in the Kivo simply because we can literally go back and rerun this as an individual job if we want to. Here I'm selecting the production recovery mode. We can append the recovered suffix. We can generate a new MAC address. We can power on the VM, send an email and select our data transport mode. And much like the backup, we can either run for all VMs or run for selected VMs. And I run for selected VMs here. And then we can just simply click run. So that's a quick overview of Nikivo backup and replication. It's an excellent backup solution with many unique features that I personally think make it stand out in a very crowded market of backup and recovery solutions. So whether you're running a home lab or whether you're running a production IT environment, Nikivo is a solution that I highly recommend. I think it's worth checking out. There are many other great solutions out there, but definitely make Nikivo one that you put on your short list to at least get into your home lab environment. Well, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And we say comment just because we're giving away five Nikivo backup and replication 20 VM licenses, which will suit many in their home lab environments. So if you comment on this video, for next week's video, we will randomly choose five commenters on this video to receive that Nikivo backup and replication license. If you have any questions about Nikivo or anything else, be sure to check out the virtualization how-to forums where I personally and many of the other community members will help out or answer questions or challenges that you may be having in the home lab. And 
hopefully help you through those. We'll work on those together. Do stay safe out there, guys. Keep on home labbing, and I will see you on the next one.